Hello! In this video I will show you the built-in geospatial functions of DashDB, how you can use them with analytics notebooks in Bluemix in order to load and analyze millions of tracks recorded by Runkeeper and data from the weather company in order to figure out interesting spots and times where you can make additional business. And we will do all of this in a single notebook in a single browser. We start in the Bluemix dashboard and open the data and analytics area where we drill down into one of our Spark services and there we find our demo notebook for this showcase here. We first step through some initial cells that set up packages and some functions that we need data on and then we review the data that originally is in Cloudant because the mobile app from Runkeeper does actually store and access it there. We have already set up a warehouse in Cloudant which means nothing else than an automatic process has discovered the table schema in DashDB and permanently keeps the data up to date and replicates it over in DashDB. So let's review this data in DashDB. As you can see with um, notebooks, you can do a lot of things, like for instance, directly bringing up the DashDB UI in context here. So we can go there, check whether our table is there, and what kind of data is in there. For the analysis of this data, we will now use Python directly in the notebook. We use a function from the IBM TB Pi package that was part of the initially loaded packages in order to establish a connection to DashDB. With this one, we can now retrieve data from DashDB into data frames that are compatible with Pandas API. Um, we can also use queries, like we can see it here, in order to retrieve data that is only geospatially located within the Munich boundaries. So now we just take this data frame and use a free Python package based on Google Maps where we pass the data frame in, in order to draw a nice heat map. But of course we can also display the data in tabular form. And we can combine this uh, with an interactive button element that will come in handy later on when we want to transform this whole thing into a form of dashboard. Next we dig a little deeper into the data here and we will figure out what are the most popular running tracks by using this geospatial operation here in the database in order to figure out those tracks that have most intersections with each other. We take the resulting data frame and display it again first um, on a heat map and also in tabular form, but we now visualize it also using the Python-based leaflet package in a more detailed form by looking at it in the individual tracks on the map. In the following step, we explore a different dimension of the running track data. It is available actually in 3D in DashDB, so we use that in order to figure out which tracks have the highest climb to get an idea of which tracks are probably the most challenging for runners. We take again the same options to visualize and display the data like in the previous steps, before we now continue and combine these two dimensions, so the tracks with the most climbs and the most popular tracks, to find out those tracks that are very popular and challenging. We have now a much more focused set of tracks and we can look at it on the map and the idea is that those are candidate tracks where I might be placing some selling booths on site in order to sell some spot strings to runners that have just finished such a challenging track. The next idea that we pull in here is that this is probably especially interesting on hot days. So we now look at weather data. For this we leverage a little weather data loader application that we have created here in the labs that loads data from the weather company. And as you can see, we can just simply clip it into the notebook here, so we can load data really in context of this whole flow. We zoom in and select Munich as the place we want the data, weather data for, and then we select historical time frame for the sake of this demo here, um, for which we want to load the weather data into our DashDB database. Then we hit the button, and after a little while, the data is ready to use in DashDB in a table. Now we use the same IBM DB Pi mechanism in order to get a data frame for this weather data table. Um, we do a little bit of transformation with Python on the data before we finally just visualize it here in a weather diagram 
over the period of time the weather has been loaded for. While this is now historical weather data, you can imagine that you can use of course also current and forecast data in order to do your actual planning of your sports drink selling action in Munich at the interesting spots. Okay, finally, here's a little trick how you can actually turn the whole notebook into a form of dashboard by basically hiding all of this coding action in Python that we have done here and really just using the interactive buttons and the display output as the thing that you're looking at as the eventual analyzing user. So this means you can actually turn your workspace that the notebook has been so far into a real report and a dashboard that you can publish.